And let's do a little more uh, study of the uh, chestnut oak tree, which is very common in the uh, central Appalachians and some of the lower elevations of the northern Appalachians and in the central in the southern Appalachians as well, up to um, several thousand feet. Um, I've been up at 6,000 feet in those mountains. I don't find a lot of this up there, but I'm sure if the habitat was right, you probably could. A lot of the southern Appalachians get 100 inches of rain a year, and it's just a little too soggy for these trees to really prosper. But it's not how much rain you get, it's where the water goes after it rains that determines how dry the soil is. Um, so we're still on the same ridge top here in Daniel Boone National Forest. This chestnut oak tree has snapped and broke. Now we can really get a look at the bark and the uh, color of the heartwood. First, the bark, as I mentioned, was very deeply furrowed, the most furrowed of all the oaks in the area covered by this channel. Again, that's at least half the length of my forefinger there, and it's deeper than that on the trunk of the tree. This is probably uh, 15, 20 feet up the tree, and the tree fell across the trail, so I had to cut it open. And just for uh, to give the Forest Service credit, this shell toe trace that I'm hiking today is in very good repair. They have kept the brush, the uh, greenbrier, and all the saplings off the trail. It's a very well-maintained trail for what that's worth. And I've been counting the rings on this tree. It's probably about 16, 18 inches in diameter. And boy, the older it gets, the slower it's been growing. And there's probably 40 years of growth in the last two inches. So this tree's been around a while. I'm guessing at least 100 years. And as many trees do, the growth rings are closer as it was younger. And as it gets more established, it kind of slows down and just kind of maintains its own size and glows, grows just a little bit each year. Another thing you can see on this chestnut oak is the corkiness of the bark. This is all corky bark right here, very thick. And that is for fire protection. The, the oak trees, especially the chestnut oaks and some of the red oaks and the scarlet oaks, grow in habitats that are prone to brush fires. Usually the whole forest doesn't burn, but the ground brush the brush, the, uh, the shrub layer will burn and the leaves will burn and it will scorch the bark. So the thicker bark can help the tree survive and not die from that kind of uh, impact. But again, this is in the white oak group or white oak family, I call it. It's not a botanical family, but a family of trees with similar color heartwood. This is the heartwood. It's a light tan color. And red oak trees, of which the scarlet oak and the pin oak our members, the red oak family or red oak group has a interior wood or heartwood that is more of a pinkish color, like a light red. So that's how we distinguish the, uh, the types of oaks. And then on this channel, I've got um, playlists for red oak family and white oak family. So this will, will be put in the white oak family, even though the bark might more resemble that of a red oak. So here's our chestnut oak um, inside out. The inside and the out, right here on the Shell Toey Trace. This is in Lewis County, Kentucky.